So I created the Stampinator uh, going back in 2014. I was doing 25,000 backpacks for Under Armour. It was a heat transfer, and I needed to speed the process up. The first time I did it, we ran 480 units an hour. I kind of was always intrigued by the WD-40. It was uh, water displacement. It took them 40 times to create it, so we came up Stampin' Air 480. That's what we ran. I went to a trade show in Fort Worth. Matting of fibers and fibrillation was a big problem in the industry. And next thing you know, we're stamping and matting fibers with the Stampinator. So today, the Stampinator, it does, it's a five-in-one product. It mats fibers. It cures your underbase. You can cure on press. You can do inline transfers anywhere from 600 to 800 pieces an hour. Depending on your transfer, we have the fastest transfer machine on the market. Our manual Stampinator, we can print, cure on a manual press, flash, as well as doing inline transfers of 360 transfers an hour. We went up against the automatic impress of rock at the show, and that was doing 290. So manually, we were doing 360 an hour. How much is the impress? $55,000 here in Canada, it's probably like 70, right? So a huge difference. So, you know, I got, when I first got into this and, and created product, everybody hated me all. You know, it's just a glorified heat press, it's this and that. Well, look, you know, I'm a screen printer. I've been screen printing for 30 years. I print for some of the best in the industry. I am uh, pretty well diverse in color separations. I've printed for huge companies, a lot of hot market printing. We print for Live Nation now. We do a lot of cool things. And, uh, you know, for me, I got into the business as an artist. How many of you guys in here are artists? How many do their own color separations? How many print that do color separations? So if you're a printer, if you're an artist and you're a printer, you know how to really do a proper color separation using the fabric and blending to get your colors where you can use your grays and get a darker gray on a darker garment. So, you know, again, there's a lot of different things, but one of the great things about the Stampinator is when you have a really good separation, you're matting the fibers and you're stamp curing that underbase, and it's like printing on paper. So when we're printing garments, we want to print on top of the garment, not into the garment. You know, I go into shops and, and I see shops that have the flood is just mashing ink through the screen. They have it at a, a 30 degree angle, right, or 40. You want vertical, five degrees. You're using the edge of the blade, you're printing on top of the garment, not into the garment. So if you want to get really good prints, you know, 305, 230 mesh, that's where you want to be when you're doing half tones and sim process, even when you're doing spot color. You know, spot color, we'll use a thin thread 156 mesh, we stamp it, it gets its one pass, and then we go in with 305s or 230s. We have some of the thinnest, you know, the, the, we're, we're not, we don't have the heaviest ink on the shirt. We want to have a light deposit, we want to have that really nice soft hand feel, right? So we'll base out the inks and we'll do certain things. But the Stampinator really allows you to achieve this, these, product, uh, these, these great prints because it's like printing on top of paper. How many of you have printed and you see pitting in your design after you print your underbase where it's the fibrillation, the fibers, and you've used the roller and it just doesn't work, you know, and you're, you're trying to figure it out that your registration's out of reg, reg because the roller or your irons are pulling your shirt out once the heat, your glue heats up and you, you go to stamp. With Stampinator, you're getting direct heat. So, you know, I don't want to sit here and bore you guys. I am a hands-on guy. I want you guys to come and check out the Stampinator and get down and dirty with it and ask questions and, uh, you know, watch what we're doing and load a couple of shirts and see exactly how the Stampinator works. So, does anybody have any questions? Stampinator, printing. Just so you guys know, Sean and I, uh, for Printies, we start a podcast called Inkpod Podcast, inkpod.podcast. You can find it on Instagram. We're on a bunch of channels. Um, and literally every single person that I've sent to watch the podcast on Stampinator, which dropped two weeks ago, they purchased it. There's literally not a single shop that this is not going to make a massive difference in their facility. Okay? Um, I would recommend talking to uh, you know Sean for Printies, or there's a bunch of guys that have the Stampinator. Don't take my word for it. Ask them. It's a really fantastic product. It does very well for a multitude of different applications. Absolutely. So it replaces your, your roller, your iron, and your flash. So listen to this. Sh yeah. Well, no. I mean, the first one you basically... For your underbase. Yeah, so you'll stamp. You'll, you'll uh, eliminate the flash and the roller. 
one of the great things about the stamp too is you, you we can achieve this at a low a low temp. We can go down as low as 270, uh, depending on how many seconds we're hitting it for. But you can use that head right afterwards, so you don't need that cool down. You can go right into a print. You know, so it's like you're you're gaining an extra head almost, essentially. Yeah. One other thing too, um, just printed like 350,000 shirts using the Stampinator as the final cure. We're over 500,000 now on that. 500,000. So I'm not telling you guys it's gonna replace the dryer, but in certain applications, for example, uh, if you're a one-man show, load and unloader, if you guys are printing and having to send it through the dryer and stopping and going and stacking, it really slows things down. Or if you're printing the front, then you wanna print the back, you could print the front, it comes around, you set it up, now the backs are ready to go. So we see a lot of even big shops who are printing the fronts, doing that final cure, stacking them, and then printing the backs and sending them through. So there's a lot of uptime for that as well. Yeah, so real quick, in our shop, we're printing sleeves. So we'll do anywhere from three to 5,000 sleeves a week. We print, we stamp. We don't even run the shirt through the dryer. I have one girl that prints 500 sleeves an hour by herself. Loads, unloads off the cart, loads, and loads the cart. It goes over, we print the left chest, it goes to the dryer, we print the full back, it goes to the dryer, both sleeves are cured. So it speeds up the process. Neck labels, we do a ton of neck labels. Same thing, screen print, and it's stamped with Stampinator. It's never, we're, we're not running it through the dryer. We're only trying to touch it, you know, the product as little as possible, twice is what we want to do, running through the dryer. So you're saying that No pickup on the back of the Stampinator. We did a myth, we did a Stampinator Mythbuster on the Inkpod podcast. It was like ten things we went over. Like the resistance I get from customers, like, oh, it won't do this, it won't do that. There's like ten things that we outline in there that'll answer a lot of your questions. But yeah, it doesn't do that either. Yeah, so the only time you get pickup is if you're under curing or if you're over curing, it gels, and usually that's when you you're using the uh, low cure inks. It's not setting the temperature properly. So we use a heat press like back. So the Stampin' Air will give you that retail, which in the retail market they call it, referred to as heat tapping. Before, you know, at the end it was uh, companies like Vineyard Vines that kind of created this, right? They wanted to have that transfer look. But we also have a craft paper that goes underneath that gives you that matte finish with a little bit of sheen so you're not going to have, it gives you more of that screen print look versus that super shine. So I have a company, he does all his own printing for about six of his retail stores. He's based out of uh, New Jersey. and he his stores are within New York. He wants that gel look. So we use, um, we use a couple different types of paper and we stamp it. Instead of him doing a top coat clear or the gel, it pretty much gives that effect. It's pretty amazing. And we'll do a puff base. So it totally gives it this sheen on this hip hop side of the clothing line that he's doing. So it's, we, I, you know, I, look, I, I push everybody to use the Stampinator and push it to the limits of what you're doing. So we have, um, uh, again, like I said, I have shops that are just running. I have a girl, Allie, in uh, Jersey, her and her husband. They've probably cured over a few hundred thousand shirts this year. They don't even have a conveyor dryer. So now we have a sponge rubber that goes between the Teflon and the heating element. So how many of you guys like swapping out your adult pallets for your youth pallets? It's fun, isn't it? Right? Everyone hates that. Now we're printing youth on the adult pallets because we put a sponge rubber uh, silicone rubber that goes between the Teflon and the Stampinator. It goes over the seams. It mats down the fibers. There's no roller or iron that's going to do that. You need a, a flat surface to get that. How about for water base? Because like you need a different dryer with lots of water base. The Stampinator works with water base. The Stampinator does a phenomenal job with water base, especially discharge. So we we ran a job a few months ago. It was for the Wu Tang Clan. It was uh, 5,000 shirts discharge base with a, a color and uh, the discharge we got about 80% uh, of the discharge was dry with the Stampinator and it, it just it does an amazing job. The other great part what I love about the Stampinator is when we're printing we'll print 600 to 700 t-shirts before we add water based adhesive back to our pallets because the moisture from the shirt is reactivating the glue every time so we're not sitting there and constantly re-gluing our pallets we're having to use the spray mist, which you're choking and breathing in, right? 
throughout the day, unless you're running like a sweatshirt, obviously you need that. Um, anybody else? So what are you doing when you had, if you're using the stamp painter as your flash, but ran 50 t-shirts and you got 20 zip hoodies, are you still using the stamp painter with the zip hoodie? So that's a great question, yes. So depending on the zip hoodie that you're printing, what we find we're printing Next Level and Bella Canvas and certain hoodies on the fashion side, they're nice and flat with the zipper that comes over. When you get into uh, something like um, you know, your Gildans where it's a little bit, uh, you have a little bit more puff to it, we have that green rubber that really still compensates for that and does a great job. So if you're printing a hoodie and you have uh, the pocket on the front, you can print about within an inch uh, to the pocket and the Stampinator will cure that ink, dry it enough that you can go around and print with still matting the fibers down. Any other questions? All right, who's next? That's it, so we start printing. So again, just to reiterate, um, any of you guys that decide you want to move forward with any of the Stampinator products, as long as you let me know by end of day Sunday, you guys have order sheets, come drop them off with me, 10% off the entire purchase. Uh, we're now gonna finally start printing. Um, just wanted to point out that Lane 7 is one of the sponsors of this event. I've been using Lane 7 when I owned my own POD business, it was the fleece that we used. Then that was about eight or nine years ago. It was very difficult to get Lane 7 into Canada. It was a huge pain in the ass. Um, it's a very premium fleece that printed exceptionally well for DTG and also fantastic for water-based. In my shop, we just had 34 DTG machines. That's all we did. We didn't do any screen printing. So we had to find a really good blank that allowed us to do that. So it was Lane 7. Um, we're very excited now that United Blanks has brought it up and will be distributing it throughout Canada. I don't think you guys have it yet, but we will tomorrow be giving you guys a sheet with a coupon code that will give you a discount off your first Lane 7 purchase. Once you try this stuff, you guys will love it. Um, a lot cheaper than Independent, which is what a lot of people are using as a premium hoodie. And like even the cost of Gildans now, they're getting pretty crazy. Like before you'd be like, ah, you know, 1050, but those, those days are long gone. So the spread is not that much more. You have a lot of clients that want to go with a more of a premium option, right? But they don't want to break the bank either. I feel like Lane 7 hits that perfectly. They have really nice fabrics, really good fits. Not like the Gildan where it shrinks up like crazy and you know, you're wearing a tank top or no, what's it? Tutu, no, what is it? Crop top, there you go. I, mean, I can never wear a Gildan hoodie, right? It'd be ridiculous, even before I wash it. So fantastic blanks, lots of really cool colors, easily to be distributed right now. Um, you'll see them in person. Just so you guys know, do not take the shirts from here. Every shirt that we're printing, it'll be printed, and then afterwards they're gonna go into bags for you guys tomorrow, and each one, every single print that you're having, you'll take that home. You guys could use that as a sales tool to show people some of the cool stuff that you learned in your clients, okay? Everybody will get one, but let us do the bundling for you, okay? Any questions? Yeah? Sorry, I'm not familiar with the Stampinator until now. In addition to it, you're all the screen printing, so you're saying it's also an automatic heat press? Yeah, so you can take, so the, the Stampinator works on every press on the market. Um, you can convert your automatic press. We have top cover pallets that go over top with the sponge rubber that we actually had created to keep up with the one and a half second recovery that we're looking for to yield that. Where's Sean? He's printees. He's doing every three seconds to transfer with two Stampinators, so that's six seconds. How many Stampinators can you do, or transfers can you do in a day? Yeah. He, so two operators, he's doing 400 an hour. He's running the brother GTX, right, correct? Creating his own transfers. It's my Mac, he's getting hooked up Wednesday. So believe it or not, um, as you guys know, we've been selling DTF machines for three and a half years. We put in 200 of the Chinese machines a lot of you guys have on the Toyotas over the last three and a half years. We launched with Mamaki uh, four months ago. We've installed 87 units, 48 on back order that are sold, and another 36 after that. There's been a massive demand on, I mean, the biggest challenge was, okay, first we have to find a printer that can do DTF well, that's not a shit show, we don't have to be a technician. So now we have the Mamaki technology. Everyone's next biggest challenge is, how do I apply these transfers as quick as possible? That's why we're selling a lot of Stampinators. I'd say half of my sales are literally for DTF. 
I have one client called Hotline. I'm sure a lot of you guys know him. I've done a YouTube uh, walkthrough with him. He literally bought a brand new MR Copperhead Flex Plus, and this is like six or nine months ago. He still has not ever put any plastic cell through it. He's got three other autos. He literally bought that just to do high speed transfers. The next evolution, now that we get that in stock, is how do we cut these transfers as quick as possible? So I'm flying a Vespa in a month from now, which is in Amsterdam this year, and we've found a solution. We're just doing our final paces. You'll be able to take an entire roll, load it up into a, a flatbed cutter. You, it'll literally walk away and it'll just cut out all the transfers, drop them in a basket with the Prince Simple technology, which we'll discuss later on. Everything's fully barcoded, so it doesn't matter. You can just have a mountain of transfers and be able to seamlessly decorate your garments and then sort them afterwards. So. Um, DTF is starting to cannibalize a lot of the space. You know, DTG, I mean, I don't give exact percentages, but it's down big time. And even screen printing. I'm not saying screen printings go away. Um, definitely don't see that happening anytime soon, but I have some shops that have had two or three autos with screen printing for 25 years, and they've literally shut them down and replaced it with three DTF machines. Yeah, and what's great about DTF is when you look at, think of the consumer. The consumer doesn't know any really doesn't know the difference between screen print, DTF, or direct the garment. So it, it's all in how you're applying the application and to make it look like a screen print. DTF, we use a fabric. It kind of mats it down, puts it into the, it gives you the fibers that it looks like it's embedded into the garment, and it does a great job. Printees is using it, they're doing it. But one thing, what it, what's great about the Mamaki machine is, at last uh, two weeks ago when I came up for the trade show uh, in Print Canada, we were hitting the Mamaki transfer in two seconds and peeling it and hitting it for another two seconds. I took a few shirts home and washed. Amazing. Like, and the hand is unbelievable. And you'll see that today. Yeah, we actually uh, we did a podcast with uh, King Tilly. A lot of you guys know him. He's a big rock tech. And he's super picky with his prints. And I forget the name of the shop, but he's talking about a massive shop that his prints, he literally can't tell the difference between HSA and the DTF. And what they're actually doing, which is something that I learned, they're going to like Michaels and they're buying uh, art canvas and they use that as a final press and basically texturize it and goes into the garment. So that's a game changer. This is a massive facility that's, that's implementing this. Uh, there was one other thing I was gonna say. Oh, so when I first brought DTF like three and a half, four years ago, I was bringing to a lot of shops and all the screen printers were so resistant. They're like, because I mean, we're printers, right? It's, it's an art, you guys like ink. I would bring this stuff in, they're like, oh, this is garbage. My customers will never want it, they'll never accept it. And literally three months, six months later, I have customers that are cutting me like, hey, listen, customers are coming to me now and specifically requesting DTF. They think it's a premium print. And some of the reasons, like, again, they don't know the differences, but they look at DTF and they're like, wow, it's so opaque, right? So white. There's no, I mean, they don't call fibrillation, but there's, there's zero fibrillation, you know, it's got a nice hand. So all these things really start to force screen printers to get heavily into DTF, okay? Um, I just got off a call on Friday with Mamaki. We were running a promo at the trade show on the Mamaki setups, um, where it's $4,000 off any package. They've agreed to let me run that for another week. So any DTF setups you guys are interested in, we can talk about it later, there's two different options. $4,000 off the entire package, okay? I don't know why you would do this, but can you print on a DTF? Uh, no. I don't know. The ink will definitely peel off. Right on. Yeah. But I think you could DTF on top of a screen print. So I have customers that actually, they'll print like, um, let's say you have sponsors. Yeah. So you might do like a one or two color print, and then the bottom sponsors, they're all DTF at the bottom. Yeah. So. And this company's based out of California. They're using MNRs. They're printing, and then the last hit is the Stampinator with the uh, transfer. 